In this lecture, we are going to compare definition of different test levels. Let's first see the definition of component testing. Here, testing is performed on each individual component separately, without integrating with other components. So when we conduct component testing, we focus on the individual, and it's not connected with any other parts of the software. Now let's use an example to understand this definition. Let's say this is the requirement given by the customer. If the speed of the motor is more than 150 km per hour and temperature value is greater than 120 degrees, then switch off the motor. So they want to switch the motor off if the speed is higher than 150 km per hour and the temperature is greater than 120 degrees. For this requirement, the developer writes the following code, which he divides into three functions. In the first function, he checks the speed of the motor. In the second one, he checks the value of the temperature. And in the third one, he controls the motor, should it stop or keep running. Now, if we were to perform component testing on this code, we would have to separate each component. This would be component A, where we only test the motor speed. The second function is component B, where we only test the temperature value. And the third function is component C, where we test the motor movement. So as you see, there are three components in this code that need to be independently tested. Under component testing, there is no relationship between component A and B, or A and C. They are all just individual units here. When we perform testing on each of these, it's called component testing. Now, now let's see the definition of integration testing. So the definition of integration testing is as follows. When individual software modules are integrated logically and tested as a group. What this means is, we have individual components, so first we group them, then we perform testing on them. To understand this concept better, let's use an example. Suppose our customer has given us the requirement, if the speed of the motor is more than 150 km per hour, and temperature value is greater than 120 degrees, then switch off the motor. Now let's say the developer has written this code for the requirement, and we want to perform integration testing on it. We already know that to perform component testing, we have to take each of these functions and test them separately. For integration testing, we have to take two components, like A and B, and test them together. What we are checking here is, if the value of speed in A is rising, is the value of temperature in B also rising? This shows us the iteration between the two modules. We can also perform this test on components C and B. Just remember that you have to take, at minimum, two units to perform this test. At maximum, you can test all three components together. Now let's take a look at the levels of integration testing. The first level is component integration testing. The second level is system integration testing. So the first point here is component integration testing focuses on interactions and interfaces between integrated components. So in component integration testing, we check interactions between two components. But when you are in system integration testing, you check interactions and interfaces between systems, packages, and microservices. If there are multiple systems, then we check the interaction between those systems. Next is, when is component integration testing performed? It is performed after component testing. Similarly, system integration testing is performed after system testing. The final point is iterative. Component integration testing is part of continuous integration process. When you develop a code, 
you do a component testing, then an integration testing, and so on. It is an iterative process. It is done by external organizations. Some companies give part of their software to different, smaller companies to test and develop. When the components come back to the main company, they test to see if they are all working well together. So this is what you need to know about component and system integration testing. You should mainly remember that component integration testing is done after the component testing, while system integration testing is done after the system testing. Let's start with system testing definition. So the system testing definition is, system testing is the testing of a complete and fully integrated software product. The key phrase here is complete and fully integrated. This means that the integration testing has been done and all components are fully integrated. Let's use an example to illustrate this concept. Suppose we have this requirement from our customer. If the speed of the motor is more than 150 km per hour and the temperature value is greater than 120 degrees, then switch off the motor. We're already familiar with this requirement from previous examples. But now, let's see how a system testing is carried out on it. We know that there are three components to the code written for requirements implementation. But when we are performing system testing, we don't care about the components. We only care about the complete system. What we need is to find the values that are of importance to the system. Here, there are two important values, the value of the speed and the value of the temperature. If we raise both these values, then the motor will stop. So we give two values to the system, 151 speed, which is greater than 150 km per hour, and 121 temperature, which is greater than 120 degrees. If the system is working, then as soon as the motor reaches these values, it should stop. So this is how a system testing is carried out. We don't care about how the code is written. What we care about, if we give a set of inputs, then what will be the output? We deal with input and output under system testing. Now, we'll discuss the definition of acceptance testing. Now, acceptance testing is performed when the complete system has been implemented. Once the system is ready, we test to see if we can accept its performance. This is the official definition. Formal testing with respect to use needs, requirements, and business process is conducted to determine whether or not a system satisfies the acceptance criteria. There are certain acceptance criteria in place. Once a system is ready, we carry out acceptance testing to check if it is fulfilling those criteria. If yes, then the customer will accept the product. And to enable the user, customer or other authorized entity to determine whether or not to accept the system, the whole point of acceptance testing is to meet the user's need and check if the system is acceptable or not. Now, there are different types of acceptance testing. In this course, we will learn about four types. The first is user acceptance testing, or UAT. The second is operational acceptance testing, or OAT. The third is contractual or regulatory acceptance testing. And fourth is alpha and beta testing. These are the types of acceptance testing that we will be studying about. Let's go through the definition quickly. First is component testing. Here, testing is performed on each individual component separately without integrating with other components. Second is integration testing. Here, individual software models are integrated logically and tested as a group. Next is system testing. System testing is the testing of a complete and fully integrated software product. Last is acceptance testing, formal testing with respect to user needs, requirements, and business processes conducted to determine whether or not a system satisfies the acceptance criteria and to enable the user, 
customers, or other authorized entity to determine whether or not to accept the system. That's it from this lecture. Thank you.